testing. Let me tell you about an idea in software development called test-driven development. The idea is that you focus first on writing tests for your functions and then worry about implementing them. So you write the test for a function before you actually write the function. That helps you clarify what is the domain, the range, and the behavior of your function. Make sure you understand what sorts of values will go in, what will come out, and how they relate to each other. And writing down tests can help you identify tricky edge cases that you can think about before writing your implementation. It lets you develop a large program incrementally and test each piece. So whether you write your tests first or you write your tests second, it's a good idea to write tests. In the first project, I gave you a lot of tests because I wanted you to be able to develop piece by piece without having to wait to the very end of the program to know whether everything fit together. That's very useful for isolating problems and then going to fix them. So you can't really depend on code that hasn't been tested, even if it looks right to you. And when you change something in your implementation, you should go back and run all the tests that you wrote before to make sure that they still pass. Because sometimes when you optimize something, you break it, and you want to know that as soon as it happens. Another part of testing is interacting with your code. Don't be afraid, once you write a function, to experiment with it and make sure that it behaves as you expect. As opposed to just moving on, make sure that you've built something you can rely on. And interactive sessions that you run can just become doc tests later by copying and pasting that section into the doc string of a function. Let's just do an example. I'm interested in implementing a function that computes the greatest common divisor of two integers m and n. So it returns the largest k that divides both m and n. A classic problem in mathematics. I can specify that k, m, and n are all positive integers. So now I know the domain and range of my function. And then I can start writing tests before I've ever started writing the function itself. So what's the greatest common divisor? of 12 and 8, it's 4. 4 divides 12 evenly and 8 evenly, and no other number higher than 4 does that. Now let's come up with a second test. How about, what's the greatest common divisor of 16 and 12? Well, that's 4 as well. So I've written some tests. We might think it's time to move on. Well, first of all, we can see if our tests run at all before we start our implementation. So this will save that. This will test and see if there are any syntax errors or anything like that. And it seems like everything's working correctly. We evaluated this call expression. We expected to get four and we got nothing because we haven't implemented it yet. Okay, so our tests are running correctly. Is it time to implement? Well, actually not because we don't have tests that try many different types of problems for the GCD function. So for instance, we haven't considered what happens when one number is a multiple of the other number. So we should probably have a test for that. Uh, we can use 16 and 8, and the greatest common divisor of 16 and 8 should be 8, which divides both of those evenly. We haven't tried any examples where the first number is smaller than the second number. Let's do one of those. The greatest common divisor of 2 and 16 is 2. And what about the case when both the numbers are the same? Okay, now we have a reasonable number of tests that try out different versions of the problem. So it's a good time to make sure that there are no issues with the tests themselves. They seem to be running correctly, but they don't pass because we haven't implemented the thing yet. And now it's time to implement. So the way we're going to solve this problem is with the Euclidean algorithm, a classic algorithm for computing the greatest common divisor of two numbers. How does it work? Well, as a base case, 
it says if m and n are the same number, then we can just return that number. Otherwise, we want to get to a situation where m is bigger than n. So if m is smaller than n, then we're just going to switch the two. OK, so we know they're not equal. We know that m is not smaller, so it must be bigger. In that case, we apply the Euclidean algorithm, which says that the greatest common divisor of m and n with m greater than n is the same as the greatest common divisor of m minus n and n, the smaller of the two numbers. I forgot my return statement. So we run the doc tests, and now they work. Excellent! Now there are other uses for having tests around, other than to make sure that your code works as you expect. For instance, now you have a bunch of examples of calls to your function, and so if you want to see how this function is running, we can just keep these around and use them. Remember last time I told you that from the module UCB that I distributed in your hog project, there's a function called trace. And if I decorate GCD with trace, then I can run my tests again. And they will all fail because now, instead of just printing out the answer when I call this, I will also print out the trace, which is not what we expect. But that's fine, because what we really want to do is look at the trace and see if we can make our function better in some way. So the GCD of 5 and 5 just gives us back 5. But let's look at this more interesting case. 2 and 16. So we passed in 2 and 16. Recursively, we called it on 16 and 2, and then 14 and 2, and then 12 and 2, and then 10 and 2, and then 8 and 2, and 6 and 2, and 4 and 2, etc. So how can we speed this up? Well, we could make the observation that as soon as we got to 16, 2, we should be able to realize that 2 is the greatest common divisor because it evenly divides 16. So how would we express that? Well, we might say if m evenly divides n, then we can just return m. So we'll run our tests again to see how fast they run, and that really long running test now finishes instantaneously. How about our other ones? Well, they all look pretty fast too. But does our code still work? If we get rid of the trace, we can run our tests one more time and find that yes, it does.